Hmm. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, I am your host, Ken Canyon. Tonight we got something good. I got I got a I got a I got a good show planned, and uh we've got a guest, and we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about some relationships and we're gonna get this crackling. Hey, what's up, Sonia? Good, good to see you. Hey, 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 it's this King Caitlin. Hey, good evening. Glad to have you. Glad to have everybody come on in the building. All right, let me know. Let me know where you're calling from. Or oh, where <laughs> calling from. <laughs> let me know. Let me know where you uh checking in from. All right, how about that? Let's do that. Let's do that. And I'm I'm and I got it on my phone too. But yes, I have a good, I have a great guest tonight. Uh, an empowering individual. And we're going to have some fun, y'all, but we're going to talk real good and we're going to make it work. All right, tell me where you're calling in from. Let, you, you you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with the doctor tonight. All right, all right, all right, from Alabama. All right, Bowie, Maryland. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you? All right, y'all. Come on, get in the building. We got Minneapolis, Minnesota. All right, we got Mississippi. I love it. All right, y'all. Get in the building. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So tonight, tonight's show, Nola. I guess that's Nolans. <laughs> Chanel from Nolans. All right. And Worcester Salem. Yep, my area, my neck of the woods. Shot Town, Rita. Glad to have you. Glad to have all of you in the building tonight with the doctor, a.k.a. Coach Ken. And tonight, yo, I have a great guest. Who's going to join me? I got it, right? <laughs> All right. G. Burrow, my hometown. All right, Stephanie. All right, so look, tonight. So I got to tell you what we're going to talk about. So y'all got to hang loose. So tonight's show is, I want to get the title right. I want to get the title right. So, um, all right, so listen to this right here. So here's the title. Because we, we came up with this title. We were like, this is a good title. Signs we ignore in relationships and why we ignore them. And with signs, there are signs that we ignore and why we ignore them. Y'all got any clue? If not, we're going to talk about it tonight. And some of you, some of you have been in relationships before where you have ignored the signs. You've seen the signs. You saw that he or she was not the one for you, but you felt like I can make it work. I can make this thing work because if I do more, if I put more effort in it, it will work. How many of you have thought that before? All right. How many of you have thought that, you know what? I can't make it work. If I work hard, if I work hard enough, well, and then you saw the signs early on, but you but but he made you live a quiver. He made that's something we said in the south. He made you live a quiver, so you disregarded the sign. And then hey, King King Caitlin was like me, all right. And then when after he made you live a quiver, and then you just said, well, it'll get better. It'll get it'll get better. He, you know what? He ain't so bad. And then the same with women, the same with men. You know what? She gonna be all right. She she ain't so bad. Or you know the way she talked to me, I can get. You know, I can be better. <laughs> she said he made me shake in my boots. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. So my guest tonight, y'all. I met him. He reached out to me, and uh, a good dude. I did some research on him, and uh, the dude is uh, is a beast. When it comes to helping people, coach people, he coached people in health and wellness, and uh, he's in a bodybuilding contest. Yo, I, I I saw him on stage and was like, yo, how do you even eat like, you know, a four ounce chicken breast and broccoli for, for for twelve weeks to get like that? But he's such a down to earth guy. So what I'm gonna do before I bring him on, I'm gonna read his bio. But I wanted to bring him on because he's got a great story and. Uh, and when we were talking about it, I was like, ooh, this will be good for my audience. But you guys can hear it from a man's perspective. When you hear, I ignored the signs 
from a man's perspective. See, a lot of women, a lot of people that I coach are women, but a lot of y'all think men don't go through stuff. Men, you know, but anyway, we're going to talk about it. So anyway, hey, y'all, his name is, his, his name is Idris. Idris. <laughs> like, like Idris, you know, Elba, uh, Idris. I like that. I got it right, Coach. Coach Idris. As the National Academy of Sports Medicine, he's a certified trainer with 25 years experience. Uh, he specializes in women's fitness through NASM. He's a nutrition counselor, certified EMT, and LVN. He has worked, he has worked, helped hundreds of clients from high school to professional athletes and housewives to CEOs to companies achieve their weight loss and fitness goals. He is the former 2002 Mr. USA bodybuilding champion with 20 years of competition. Y'all, that means he's a disciplined brother. All right. He's an Air Force military veteran where he served in De Desert Storm. So he ain't no joke either. So he don't, don't let the smooth taste fool you. All right. Uh, as a combat medic, Facebook group, family and fitness and weight loss community, y'all, I want y'all to welcome my man. Idris, Coach Idris, all right, Coach Idris. What's up, hey, Doctor? What's that, man? How you doing? Uh, man, I'm doing better. I'm doing better now that you've joined me. Listen, <laughs> I can put your picture up because, like, I got a lot of women in my audience, and I know you're in a relationship right now. I ain't even want to put your pictures up. You know what I mean? But I just let them get. I just let them get you just live in person. But thank you, thank you for being on the show tonight. Welcome. And uh, and I'm gonna tell you why I wanted to have you on. Besides the fact that you're just a, a great brother, um, but you are, you represent the kind of man that a lot of women that I coach would like to have, okay? And I mean, you're a good looking guy, you're, you're doing your thing, you're very honorable in every way, but yet you've had females <laughs> to go cuckoo for cocoa balls. <laughs> hey, look. We were talking about the red. We were talking about the red flags, and what I wanted to do tonight was take it from a man's perspective. Like men see red flags, we disregard them too. And what made you, um, pretty much, you know, from that perspective, um, you know, I just want I just want you to talk about just introduce yourself to the people. Okay. Um, yeah, I've uh, I, I'm from New York. Grew up in uh, the Bronx. Back in the hip hop days, 1965, I think you and I are about the same age. Yes, uh, grew up absolutely. With, uh, yeah, yeah, I grew up around LL and, and Christopher Williams. And, right, uh, right. Rod Strickland, and you know that, okay. that's kind of my group. Yeah, I went to school with those. Right, uh, Melly Mel from Grandmaster Flash. Is Melly a Mel. Wow. <laughs> All Back right. In the, the Valley in New York City. I went to the Air Force at 20 years old. Uh, Lived in a bunch of states, lived in New York, Texas, Vancouver, Washington, the L.A. area, San Francisco area, Palm Springs. Um, got into bodybuilding at a young age, you know, fell in love with this, the discipline part of it. But the part most people hate, I like yeah, doing the part, it. the part that I, go, I just came from, the part I hate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you mentioned the chicken and stuff, I laugh at that because, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wish I had stock and chicken and broccoli. I don't, oh, I don't man, if you had there. stock and chicken and broccoli, brother. I know. I see all the trophies behind you, so I, I know what it is. Twenty years in the game. Yeah, a lot, a lot um, of chicken. Let, so let me ask you this: um, I know that you said you got in it for the discipline, um, and um, and quite honestly, it helped mold you. And we're, I want to talk a little bit about your past, and then I want to bring it forward and to talk about what we talked about. But but what is it about? Um, taking your mind and your body to a place that most people can't go that that's appealing to you? Uh, to be honest with you, that's why I'm where I'm at today, uh, because of bodybuilding. A lot of people look at bodybuilding as a visual thing, like looks. It really has nothing to do with looks. Um, mm -hmm. Even though it's an appearance sport with, you know, everything else is a performance sport, bodybuilding is the only appearance sport. Wow. It has right. nothing to do with your performance. Like we're in a gym putting it down, putting 500 bench up, leg pressing 1,800 pounds. We're in a gym putting it down, but we're not judged by that. 
but judged wow. by how we put our physiques together, how we sculpt our physiques with food and, and weight. I mean, think mm. about that. We make those physiques out of food and weight. Wow. And and so what I learned, one of the best things I've learned, a couple of things, is when I first got in the gym, I saw guys bigger than me doing stuff. And I was a baseball player at the time. I was trying to make it in baseball. Wow. So I, so I started going into the gym. And most bodybuilders, they all come from football, basketball. They all come from somewhere else. Either right. an injury changes their course or we just don't make it. We're not good enough in that sport. So we kind of fall into the gym. So I noticed guys doing stuff that I could never do. I was like, I'll never be able to do that. And six months later, I was doing it. And I remember like it was yesterday. I was 20 years old. And I remember going, you know, if I put my mind to things, I can do whatever I want if I really put my mind to it. And I remember like it was yesterday. And wow. He, yes. And, 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 and that's always fueled me, all the ups and downs and always. I, you know what? I don't care where I'm at. I don't care how hard this is. I know I can get over this. That's and cool. A lot of people in relationships, especially when people have bad ones, they 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 leave those relationships and they get stuck and they can't move forward. And I speak to a lot of people that say, I don't know if I could ever trust again. Mm. Well, that's a decision. That's a choice. You can trust again, but you're choosing not to. That's good. And I, under and I, I understand say that all the time. And I understand why. And that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, kind of talk about today. I, I understand why, because I had to go through that. I went through a period where I was in a bad relate. I was in a relationship where the woman didn't want what I wanted. As soon as she got Ooh. pregnant with my daughter, she pushed me out, basically. As soon as <laughs> Wait, so hold on. You said once she got pregnant with your daughter, you boom, you're done. I was I was pretty much obsolete. And okay, I guess I guess what you got what what you came I guess you got what you came for. So right. I, I'm, and, I'm, I'm and, so I know alone. what that feels like. Yeah, and and so I I remember at the time I didn't remember, but um, I was hurt, and I said, you know, I'm never going to let another woman hurt me again. And for the right. next 13 years, I was in three relationships, and none of them was successful. None of them. Wow. And I was like, okay, something's up here because I'm a relationship dude. I'm not like we were talking about this earlier. I ain't I ain't around chasing women. I, I I've never been that way. Even when I was a kid, I just never well, I, I, I was that way at one point. I mean, I mean, I ain't always been good. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real with you. I ain't always been good. I'm good now though. <laughs> yeah, I, I I tried to be, but you know how you try to be something you're not. That but was you're not, way. and it doesn't work. And it does not work. I was not successful. Um, I was not, I could not be a player. I wasn't a player. That, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad, man. You, you're a heck of a guy. So look, so tonight I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Yes. I wanted to talk about that relationship, but I want to talk about what led up to it. Cause you talked to me about, um, you were in a relationship with that was somewhat dysfunctional. Um, and tell me how you got there and tell me what made you decide that, you know what, I'm done. And then what made you decide I want to love again. I want to try again. Cause a lot of people, Here's the thing. This is so important because a lot of people have experienced, they're jaded because they had a bad experience. They had a bad, you know, uh, lover. They had a bad whatever relationship. But the truth of the matter is they and they said, just forget it. And what I'm telling people, and this is why I'm doing this online dating thing that we're doing. We're doing a master class starting tomorrow. Okay. Um uh, and I'm going to say, we got room for one more person, but 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 I'll get to that later. But I just told them, I said, listen, a lot of you have had bad experiences, but only you can give yourself permission to love again, to trust again, to do it again. So my question to you, tell us a little bit about what happened to you as a good guy. See, y'all out there don't know that good guys, and see, y'all just think it's just ladies this is why I wanted him on. Good guys go through shit too, y'all. And there's women out there that are putting people through it just as much as men. So let's not get it twisted. So I want to be balanced in what I do. So so tell me the story and what and what happened. Well, you know, she and, and here's the, the the best part about it is it wasn't that she was a bad person. It's that's just where she was in her life. She had been in two really abusive relationships prior to me. And she had seven years of two back-to-back -back abusive type. One was physical, one was emotional. Okay. So I come into the picture. She's changing her her style of guy, and but at the time, my 
And I always tell people this. I had a client today I was telling. You can't get mad at yourself for making mistakes because you don't know everything until you learn it. And I realized then I can't be mad at myself for making a mistake because I hadn't learned this. I hadn't learned this lesson yet. And a lot of people pause and they go, well, I feel stupid. I'm like, well, that's like you feeling stupid because you don't know how to train somebody when you've never trained anybody before. Right. So I would, so I never, I would never fall into this. I'm stupid because I made a mistake thing. So when I, so when I'm in this, I'm looking at her and I'm like, you know what? She was never ready for another relationship. She just wasn't mm. ready. And I can't get into relationship with people who have just been got out of a bad relationship and they right. haven't done their healing yet. And that's mm. a big problem that that's I think huge. everybody does is we meet people and these people, when I, I tell you, when I was dating the, for two years before I met the woman I'm with, the first thing I would do is ask about a person's past relationship. Right. It doesn't really matter what they said, it's how they said it. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So if they said it angrily, like, well, he a piece of bleep. <laughs> and I, would, I said to a bunch of them, I was like, you know, we can't do this. And they would be like, why? And I'm like, because he's still in your life. Oh, right. Oh, no, he's not. We broke up five years ago. I go, but you, you act like you broke up last night. Right. Wow. And wow. now that's going to come out on my watch. Yeah. And right. It, and it does it every single time. So let me ask you this. So you got into the relationship with, with the lady, right? And she wasn't completely healed. Um, do you think that you were a rebound or she just wanted to feel better? Or what do you think? It, you know, it could be any of those. Um, it could be, you know, a safe place to go because oh, I'm pretty because wow. I'm pretty benign. I'm I'm a really benign kind of guy. I'm I'm still New York. I'm still hard. I you know I'm I'm, I'm one of those kind of guys, but I'm non-threatening. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. Like even though I was 285 pounds and huge, I was one of those big teddy bear kind of guys. No, nah, so, he just was a teddy bear because he wasn't mad. Hey, look, y'all, <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. You throwing but, up that kind of weight. <laughs> just don't make him mad, and you know. But I get, but I get what you're saying, though. Honestly, I, I don't like. I don't want to get mad because I don't know what I do. Honestly, no, no, I, I, to, I totally get it. All right, so, but here's my thought, though. When things were, the, let's so we talk about the signs. When you, what signs did you see that you disregarded that this might not be? She well, might this, not be ready. Here's the deal. That relationship for me was what put me into a, a valley where I said, I was. I remember sitting there in my living room. My daughter was two and a half. I'm in this relationship that is has no nothing going on. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I said, you know what? I'm never going to let another woman hurt me. So mm. when I broke, when I left her, I left her because I was like, look, you don't, you don't know how to love. You just, you just, you don't have that right now. And mm. I, I can't tell, I can't force that on you. So I left. But I left with this seed in the back of my head, and I didn't know I planted this seed. You know how they say, put it out in the universe, put it out in the universe? Yes, yes. That is real. That is so, so, so real. So real. It's so real. Because I made yeah. that comment, and I stuck to that for the next three relationships. I was with the, matter of fact, the first relationship out of that relationship, I moved to Houston, and that person and I were perfect. And I left her three years into the relationship. Wow. Because I never saw it. I never one time saw what I had. And then I got into another relationship. That didn't work. Then I got into another one. So finally, I'm 45 years old. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and this is the part that most people will not do. They just don't. I don't know why they don't do this. I was like, okay. The only common denominator here is you, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're the problem. <laughs> okay. Wow. You, because I knew that. Yeah. Can I point my finger at them? This is what, and this is what I mean by why we people spend so much time pointing their finger at the other person. They never stop and go, yeah. But what are you? Well, how are you contributing to this? How are you contributing to these these bad relationships? Because you're the one that's moving on. It doesn't matter what they did once you move on. You wow. you're moving on with you. So if you have things that are contributing to this, you're just going to do that in the next relationship. So I went to a counselor and I went to the counselor. I said, look, dude, I'm, I'm a relationship guy and I can't find happiness. 
I need to I need to rehash these 45 years and figure out what the hell went wrong. Wow. So I would go in there and talk and he would just ask me how my day was. And he was a really good counselor because he never answered any questions. He made me find all my own answers. Yeah. So he would just ask me, how you doing? And I would have to tell him. And Ken, this is the first time in my life at 45. And this is another problem with men. So ladies, listen up. Men aren't taught to pay attention to our, our feelings of hurt. Oh, yeah. We're, I, I we're taught to ignore that. that. Yes, you're right. We're taught to ignore that. And it, it, so you, you know what, though, Coach? Here's the thing. Most men don't come to that point unless they're tremendously hurting. They, they, they've gotten to the point where the, the pain to stay the same is greater than the pain to change. And so then that, you know, then even in my own life was, I was like, look, I cannot stay where I am. I can't be this person anymore. And so now, and I can't take myself where I need to go. So, but a lot of people, and I appreciate you saying that because a lot of people will, will buy clothes thinking or cars or a new home thinking those are the things, but those are external things but, we, but it's an internal problem. But we don't want to deal with the internal. We don't want to go to somebody that say, you know what? I'm screwed up. I'm messed up. And, and the fact that you were like, I need something different. I need to be happy. I want to be happy. And you sought somebody, you know, to help you. I always say um, a good coach, a good teacher brings a student to the threshold of their own understanding. You know, I, I can't give you the answers, but I can bring you to the doorstep so that you recognize the answer. And what you said is so important. You have to actually want to change. You have mm. to actually want to change. You have to actually humble yourself because you got to, you know, you got to look at me. I'm, I'm Mr. USA. I'm Mr. This, Mr. California. Right. And I had to go, you know what, dude? That's just what you've done. That is not who you are. Ooh, Those are just things that you've done. Ooh, that is super powerful. People get caught up in what they have. So, so I, I so I got to interject here. So I put up a post about. I, I rarely talk about other coaches here. So, but I'm gonna mention this. Um, the, the the dude Kev, Kevin Samuels that's built this brand on talking about. Well, and then what I said, um, I made a post that. You know, it was controversial, a lot of people. But but the most important thing that I tell people is, is listen, he's basing a high value man on what they've done, not who they are. So when you just said, it's not what I, it's what I've done. It's not who I am. That just resonates with me because I don't care if you make a million dollars, but if you're a piece of shit. If you're a slug, if you it doesn't matter. You're not high value. You have you're a low character, but you're low value person, and that's the part that I I, I you know I, I take I take a you know I have a problem with honestly. So anyway, but I'm glad you said that. I'm glad I'm glad you said that. You so, know, so I started. I just started to to say, okay, who are you as a person? What mm -hmm. makes you tick? Um, what do you not? I think a lot of people have a hard struggle when they they don't evaluate themselves honestly. They don't do that. Most, just for, for a perfect example, and I did this intentionally with the girl I have, I'm with now, and I did it intentionally. I do Actually, I do everything with intent. <laughs> oh, I can believe that. I, I can believe that. Military, I know, yeah, that. 20 years of bodybuilding. Yeah, you do, you do. You're pretty intentional about what you're doing. I, I do everything with intent. So okay. she had asked me one day, she said, you know, what do you rate me a scale from one to 10? And you know, Ooh. people love, people love that, right? <laughs> now I'm sitting there going, okay. So I go, honestly, she goes, yeah, I go, okay. I, I rate you about a six. Okay. And she goes, she kind of looks at me and I go, you know, when you do your thing up, you know, it's about a seven, you know, and she's like, <laughs> well, what, what do you rate yourself? Right. <laughs> okay. And every time I say that women go, did she smack you? Right. Every single time. And she goes, what do you rate yourself? And I said, I don't rate myself. And she goes, why? I said, because it doesn't matter. I don't rate myself because I don't date myself. Uh, okay. you, all that matters <laughs> is what you think when you see me. 
Wow. Oh, I said, wow. I go, I go, so whether you think I'm a two or you think I'm a 10, it doesn't matter because you're here. You're right here, whether I'm a two or a 10. Okay. I so, like so, that. So it, does, so it doesn't matter to me. And I go, and here's the problem with that. And I brought that up. I want her to hear this. I said, here's the problem with that question that everybody seems to want to ask. When people ask that question and they get offended by the answer or they get puffed by the answer, you're expecting everyone to see you the way you see you. Wow. And that ain't, that's just not real. <laughs> wow. That is deep. That is so deep. Everybody's um, not going to see you the way you do. Wow. So why be offended by it? If I lined up 10 women and one said, one girl says one, another one says two, another one says eight, another one says 10, they're all right. They're all right. Cause it's coming from <laughs> that, 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 listen, dude, that is profound. They're all right. They're because all right. At the end of the day, it's their perspective. <laughs> and this is, okay, so I, I got to bring this up. So, all right. So, I get a lot of haters on like what I do a lot of times, especially on TikTok a lot of times. And and what I told someone recently, I said, truth is, they're right. What they say about me. I am obnoxious. I am in their Opin eyes. Opinionated. Opinionated. I am opinionated, obnoxious. I'm everything that they think they are. But, but none of their opinion matter, though. <laughs> the only one opinion that matter is mine. And so what I tell people is this. Uh, people will change their opinion of you the day after you do. You know what? But so many of us are, we are deciding that other people's opinion of us matter. They have, more they have than weight. They give people, they give people's opinion weight that it doesn't deserve. It doesn't that deserve it doesn't that deserve. much weight. You know, wow. you have this, everybody's done this. You've done it. Everyone, every Marvin Kimmer, everyone's done this. Okay. They have a friend, a homeboy or a girlfriend. And they tell you about their homie or girl. Dude, you got to see this girl I just met. Oh, you got to see this guy I just met. He's beautiful. He's this, he's that. And then you see her and you're like, yeah, she all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she all right. <laughs> she all right. Now, are you, are you wrong? No. Is he wrong? No. <laughs> so if if we can see that, then why can't somebody look at us and see us as a full? Like I said, I said this. I get. I used to get this a lot, especially when I was at the top of my game and all these. Ma I was in like six, seven magazine publications a month for seven wow. years. You know, Flex Magazine, Muscle Fitness Magazine. I mean, I'm I'm probably I'm telling I'm you, sure. like, dang, I wish yeah, I could be Ronnie like Cole. that one day. <laughs> I'm friends with Ronnie Coleman, Sean. I, I just oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Hey, look. He, lives, he actually lives 25 minutes up the road from me, Ronnie. <laughs> wow. And, and you know what? It's funny. All of those guys that, you know, guys like me, ex-athlete, that play football, we, you know, I've fallen all of them. Sean Ray could never yeah. get over the top because he wasn't Sean, big Sean, enough. Sean, me, me and Sean and, were texting today. Me and Sean were texting And, and Ronnie Coleman, the monster. You were, but you know who I met is a nice guy. We talked for a good little while, Lee Haney. One, I knew you were going to say him. Beautiful man. Beautiful, beautiful man. dude, man. He's such a dude. I was in the dude presence. You would never know that he had won Miss the Olympia that many eight, times. Eight, eight he eight was times. so humble. Lee I was Haney's a, Lee Haney's a beautiful man. Ronnie Coleman's a sweet guy. You know who's a really funny, funny guy? Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can believe that. I Arnold can, Schwarzenegger I can that. is a clown. He gets his clown on. He talks smack. <laughs> I, 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 I can awesome. believe that. He's awesome. And all of those guys that we followed, because all I wanted to do was get a Gold's Gym t-shirt one day. You know, you get the bow, hit the bow from the magazine, you know. But no, I like, but that, I love it, man. But what you're, you kicking some knowledge, y'all listen. Y'all need to listen to this. He, what he said was so profound. What he said was, listen, and I, I got to go back. He asked his lady, asked him a question. He told her, to her the truth based on what he saw at the time, whether it was the truth or not, but how she took it. But then he said, anybody looking at me, some people might say I'm a one or two or three or eight, 10. They're all right. But the truth is, it's their perspective. 
But the only thing that matters is your perspective, y'all. That's all that matters. We are giving people so much weight. We're giving people so much power over our lives. And that's not how it should be. I'm like, yo, that's cool. So let me ask you this. When you went to the therapist after you had been through the relationships and you had seen different signs, but you had to see some signs in yourself. You had well, I, I went there honestly for me first. Okay. Um, I didn't because I this is the thing I notice about people. When they go through a relationship, there what the other person did is well documented. What yes. you did, not so much. <laughs> Your not role so is not so documented. Right. And I was like, I know what they did. What did I do? Right. How can I how can I be his I, I call it my negotiable and non-negotiable list? Most people don't even have a non-negotiable and negotiable list. They just right. go from relationship to relationship, changing partners, but never changing themselves. Ooh. So this guy, this guy had A, B, C, D. And, but he didn't have EFG. So they find somebody with EFG and he don't have ABCD. True. <laughs> True. So and they talk. just keep doing this. They, they don't ever go, okay, what can I, who am I? Like I told my girl this, I go, here's the good things about me. Here's the things that aren't so great. I'm mm -hmm. working on these things, but I'm just letting you know, this is the part about me that can cause a problem, but I'm working on it. I would have a lot of women say to me when I was single, oh, I'm a, and I love this one. I'm a great catch. I'm a great catch. And I was, and I'd laugh. I go, really? You're a great catch, huh? She goes, she goes, yeah. And I go, why are you a great catch? Well, because I got my own, especially nowadays, I got my own money. Right. I'm a nurse. We all always start with the money, don't we? I got a house. I got a car. And I'm like, that's all great stuff for you. What's that got to do with me? Wow. You act like if, you act like if we hook up, you're going to be buying dinners and you're going to, I'm going to be living in your house. No, if we hook up and we get, the, and something happens, I'm losing my money. Cause I'm not a guy who needs, she was like, well, don't you guys want women with their own money? Cause you don't want gold diggers. I go, a gold digger is not a woman who makes less than you. A gold digger is a woman who's only after you for your money. Yes. I go, most real men plan on paying the bills. Most True. real men. That's just what we do. Right. <laughs> Right. No, I had a girlfriend where she didn't have to work at all. I did all the work and I was working 14 hours a day. But I came home and, and she did her house was clean, food was cooked. We had our roles and we played them to the T. So I realized going forward, I have to have a relationship that makes sense. I have to have someone that understands I have faults too, but I'm working on them. Mm. I don't expect you to put up with my bullshit. I expect you to understand that I have some and and I'm working on them. You know, but that's, you keep saying you keep saying the key phrase. I'm working on them. Yeah. And my wife and my wife. I used to have I used to have an anger issue all the time, get mad about this. And my wife will tell you now, I don't because I worked on it. Now I put everything in perspective. I, I don't even get. I, I rarely get mad. What is Rare, it? Rarely. It is if you if people realize the only reason you get mad, the true reason why most people get mad at things. It's because they don't know how to handle stuff when they don't like it. They just That's don't know true. how to handle it. It's not that you have to get that mad. You cannot like something without getting mad. That's true. <laughs> and that's the part that I worked on and learned. And I don't, I don't get like if I get upset now, it's I don't, I don't act irrational. I don't do anything like that because um, I learned something along the way that anger was one letter from danger, you know, and that was it. Uh, Noreen says, reintroduce your guest. All right, Noreen, I'll tell you who he is. He's a, he's um, um, Coach Idris. Um, and, you know, he's he's a, he'd say, check this out. He's been a personal trainer for 25 years. But the thing about him is he specializes in fitness, nutritional counseling. He uh, He's helped professional athletes to housewives, to CEOs. Listen to it, but this is dope right here. He is the former Mr. USA, y'all, 2002, bodybuilding champion for 20 years. He's a military veteran. He was a, a medic in Desert Storm, 
And uh, yeah, you need to reach out with, to him, Noreen. She's got a website called Black Fit and Single. Oh, and okay. she awesome. is dope. And uh, you can get his contact information. I want y'all to hook up. Um, he would be great for, for what you're doing as well. Um, but you said something about working on it. And, she, you, and you said... You said a lot of profound things, and you, and you were saying that at the end of the day, um, I keep going back to I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I got shit with me, but I'm working on it. Most people that I coach, by the time they get to me, a lot of times they have not worked on it, but they're ready. They are ready. And a lot of times pain drives us to the point. You know, I see the signs in me. I'm, I, you know, a lot of times I, I've seen the signs, but I'm willing to acknowledge what I see because we see a lot of stuff in people, signs in people, and but we're not willing to acknowledge the signs we see in ourselves. I know that my temper is short. I know that I don't do this. I know that I'm, I'm, I know all of the shortcomings, but I don't want to recognize them. I don't know what you said about getting angry. Mine was, mine was along the same lines. I grew up with two sisters, just one dude and two girls, one older, one younger. Right. Woo. And they ganged up on me. And, you know, so one day, you know, my father told me, well, you know, and I was a real sensitive, shy kid. I was sensitive. I'm crying all the time. My father's sick of me crying all the time. <laughs> like, boy, you need to fight. So he told me, you need to fight back, boy. So one day my older sister, I don't, I can't remember how old I was, maybe, maybe 11, some, she's two years older. She, she's doing it again. So I flat, I flip her in the kitchen, boom, throw her over my shoulder. <laughs> my father came home with my, <laughs> you don't put your hands on no girl. What's wrong with you? I was right. like, you, told me to fight. you told me to fight back. He goes, not with your hands, not physically. So wow. I don't know how to get, so that, that, how to that's get. a profound lesson. <laughs> That was a profound lesson right there. So, so I learned how to get real nasty with the tongue, though, Ken. Right. Uh, which is, I, that which used is, to be one, that used to be one of the things that I had to work on. <laughs> I had to be, work on my wife and I. Which could be even worse. Which uh, could be even worse. Well, mental torture is is lasts longer than physical. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and now, absolutely. So, so when I came an adult, I still had that tendency to lash out when you hurt me. But mm. like I was saying, when I went to the counselor. I had to learn what hurt was because he said to, one day I come in, I remember coming in and he was, how was your day? And he's asking me about what's going on. And he said, how'd that make you feel? And I said, I was angry. And I said, you know what? I wasn't, and this, I just I remember like it was yesterday. I'll go, actually, I wasn't angry. And I, <laughs> I would love to see my face. I went, I think I went, I was hurt. That's what wow. hurt feels like. <laughs> <laughs> That's because, funny. because we're taught, Real men don't cry. Right. You know, we're taught this our whole lives, and then we become adults, and we can't relate to women. Because when women are hurt, I used to always say, oh, she'll get over it, she'll get over it, she'll get over it. Because I didn't understand what hurt meant. So wow. this is the first time I realized, you know what? You don't just get over hurt. <laughs> True. You don't. You don't just get over. So I stopped saying that. The last day I ever said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. So that, that was one of the good. big, that was one of my big aha moments. I was like, okay. So if that hurt sucks. So, so I learned from that day forward, if, if someone is hurt, I know what it looks like on their face. And no matter what's coming out my mouth, bring it down. Bring it down. Mm. So I told my girl, I said, look, when I get mad, I, I get I get ugly. I, I say some things. And she said, I said, but tell me and I'll stop. You tell me that I'm doing it and I'll stop. So one day we were getting into it. And I, you know, when I started going there and she goes, Idris, you're being mean. And I stopped talking. I walked off, did some woosahs and some akuna matatas. <laughs> came back. And I said, I'm sorry about that. Let me rephrase that. Wow. And I came, and I came in. She almost shit the, She almost shit her pants. She couldn't believe it. <laughs> she goes, wow, it worked. And I said, I told you, I don't like that about me. That doesn't wow. work in any relationship. So as long as you tell me, I will stop. Because eventually it won't happen at all. And that's where you are. It doesn't even happen at all anymore with you. Wow. So, but people so what advice? You gotta acknowledge that you do it. You can't ever ask. One thing that people do, and I don't understand, I understand why they do it, but they gotta stop doing it. When somebody's and, and women do this a lot, they they allow it men to do it and they ask you to do it. 
I've been hurt in the past. I've been this, I've been that. If you love me, you'll understand and you'll work with me. And I would tell them, if you love me, you wouldn't ask me to. Mm. You would fix your problem first and come to me whole. Because why should I put up with something I had nothing to do with? Wow. That, that pain you have, I have nothing to do with that. Why should I put up with something I had nothing to do with? And there's another thing. You can't fix a pain you didn't create. Mm. Only the other person can, and they're gone. Mm. She can, and they can. You can't do it. Because I because what you said earlier on the intro, I would always think, you know what? If she sees me treating her a certain way, she'll appreciate that. She'll change. It never, ever, ever happens. Because they don't see when their anger has nothing to do with you. They're just angry. <laughs> you didn't wow. do anything. But you like I tell people, when someone tells you they have triggers, turn around and run as fast as you can. Wow. Because if you have triggers, that means at any moment you can you can fire that trigger. Now I'm walking around on eggshells. I'm walking around on a minefield, not knowing what I can say, what I can do. And the worst relationship is one where you you don't know what you can say and what you can do. That is, I've been there multiple times, and it is. Yeah, really that's worse. not a good place to be. And men, men do it to, to men do it to women, and women do it to men. You're right, by, and, and it goes both ways. You're absolutely right. Uh, but but you know what I realized in coaching? I was at an event. I, I they hired me to come to an event Friday. It was it was a great event. Um, but there was one young lady in there who got super triggered because I was asking her to communicate a certain way, why it's important for her to communicate. And her whole thing was, why can't they do it? Why can't they do it? Why can't men do it? I said, men should do it. I said, but I'm, I'm talking to you right now. But I said, but if he doesn't do it, does that absolve you of having to do it? Um, communicate properly because he's not willing to do it because what you're looking at is your relationship with him. I'm looking at you as a person, even when you move to the next relationship. That's exactly right. Because you if you don't understand you and how to communicate now, you're going to do it, you do it again. And right. you're going to do it again. Yes. People are so, like somebody asked about trigger. Um, what's, a, what's another indication? I'm not sure some people don't know that term trigger. Um, trigger is basically a, something that some, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. When I left my second, my marriage after counseling, and this is when I really learned the most. After I left counseling, I met someone else, got married and ignored all the signs, kept giving her excuses for her behavior. Oh, she was in a bad relationship, so that's why she does this. Oh, she, oh, she, oh, things will be different with me. You know, I, I, because, you know, I can fix all things, Ken. I'm, I'm not amazing. I can fix all right, things. Right, right. So I'm in, I got this, you know, you know, Dalai Lama kind of, you know, Buddhist feeling going on. And this person, I find out, you know, in a year and a half into the relationship, I'm like, you need to go see somebody because there's something going on here. So she goes and get, gets checked and she ends up having, Bipolar, ADHD, and borderline sociopath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, you, so I was living at Disneyland. Okay. <laughs> wow. And it wasn't it wasn't the happiest place in the world either. Well, and I'm, just, I'm what, glad you got out of there in one whole piece. In one whole piece. But what I took from it was this. Because once I saw, once she came back with that diagnosis, I was like, this ain't going to work. Because I already know, I've been training people for years. I helped four women leave abusive marriages by building their self-esteem and building their confidence in the gym by losing weight and feeling good about themselves. So I've heard it all. And I was like, bipolar people, you can't reason. There's just, there's no reasoning. And it's not their fault. They just can't do it. And then borderline sociopaths, they can't take responsibility for anything. Right. So you're constantly like, what's going on here? What happened? Everything was fine. You you hear it with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. You listen right. to Johnny Depp's testimony. It yeah. sounds just like my last relationship. Wow. He's like, he's like, I don't know. How, how did we get here all of a sudden? <laughs> like we wow. were just we just had a discussion about Pop Tarts, and now we're over here saying that we should get divorced and move. Like it just goes from here to here. 
just like that. And they cannot, listen, people, they can't control it. There is nothing that they can do. Wow. It's not like a choice. And, and I think that's the hardest part. I used to, to I, part of me that you don't know that I, I used to work at San Quentin Prison on death row when I got out the Air Force. Really? Okay. I worked for the, I worked on death row for two years. Richard what was, Ramirez, what was the that Stalker, like? all that. I just learned about human behavior. I mean, working with serial killers, talking to them, feeding them lunch and breakfast every day. You, you really, really learn, you know, there's just some people out here that just, that's just the way they are. And it's a scary thing. It's very scary. Wow. Because you're like, well, how do I read them? So when I leave this relationship, I'm like, okay, there's people out here that can read you like a book from day one. And here's the mistake that I made, and this is a mistake that a lot of people make. When I started dating again, I asked every question that mattered to me on the very first conversation. <laughs> Damn, for real? Day one. <laughs> okay. You're going to get, will you ever get married again? Do you want children? Would you want everything? A lot of women ran for the hills. Oh my God, that's a red flag. You're moving too fast. I go, peace out, honey. Peace. <laughs> because. Well, what, what made you, what made you do it like that though? Because and I, and I didn't want to, I don't want to waste one more cup of coffee on you if there's no future. Okay. Okay. If we have completely different outlooks on our future, we don't need to go on a second date. And this right. is what I mean about the sex part. I don't need your cookie. I've had plenty of them. I've had bags of cookies. I want the right cookie. Uh, I don't need your cookie. Uh, I even told that, you. And, that's, and, and, and look, that's why they need to come to uh, our online mastermind, dating mastermind, because we're I'm teaching them what questions to ask men so that they don't waste their time. And, so but you have to, their time. And, and what these people, what other people don't do is they don't ask themselves that question first. Right. What is it? What am I, what am I not my negotiables and my non-negotiables? What do I have to have in a relationship to be happy? And this is one of the things that I did a video on the three worst things to get into a relationship. The three worst things to let be your guide into a relationship. Okay. Falling in love, sex, and money. Those are the worst three things. And most people base their relationships on those three things. Wow. And the reason I say that is this. I know tons of people that have the greatest sex and they still end up divorced. Yes. I know tons of people who are in love and walking out the door going, I love them. I just can't live with them. And Lord knows money don't work. Bill Gates and Bezos are divorced. <laughs> so three things that most people base their relationships on don't hold relationships together. They'll prolong a bad one. But they will never, ever hold it together if it's not a good relationship. That's good. So They're going to write that one down. You say money, sex, and... Um... Money, sex, and I love. Oh, man, that's that's good. Uh, my whole thing is core values must be similar. I put, up, I put up a post. I said attraction can bring you together, but only core values can keep you together. You know what? And, and and I, I, you know. I call it a pie, Ken. I call it a pie. In the whole pie, 25% of the pie are those three things. Those three things, in my opinion, are 20% of the pie. The rest of the pie is dependability, loyalty, honesty, trustworthy. I know you're going to be there when you're supposed to be there. I know that if I go down, you're going to stand up. Because you can have a mediocre sex life, but you can make it better. You can make more money. And you can fall in love over time. So when Indeed. I got into this relationship, I told her, don't be falling in love with me real quick. Make me earn your love. And I'm going to make you earn mine. I love it. Earn it. I, I, I talk about that on my lives all the time. Make him earn it. And and and, and I think that that, that 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 is profound right there. We give away, we give away our love. We, but but what that basically is, is not we're giving away our love. We get moved by the hormones that are released during these times. And so what happens, it masquerades itself as love. Yes. And so when you have this, this, this love cocktail of dopamine, oxytocin, and um, serotonin or either opiates, it creates what I call the love cocktail 
that masquerades as love, but the truth of the matter is it's not. It's a false, re- it's a false negative. I've had girls will. tell me, I love my lover, and I'm like, and I go, why? They can't even answer it. <laughs> right. Well, of course. What, what does he do? What is he doing that has you loving him? Or you just love him? And usually they go, no, I just love him. I'm like, but he ain't doing anything for you to love him. That's how you know that they're they're operating on this cocktail because they can't tell you why. They can't tell you what. All they can tell you is I just feel good. He made my liver quiver. Yeah, the whole liver quiver thing. I, I love I love what you said. I got that one for my wife. So you know, <laughs> I, 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 got- I, I call it, you know, hot boxing. But um I tell him, I go, look, man, here's the his his and this is the truth too. Women love him to death, but women, I've heard him say this a thousand times. When women have sex, it's different than when men have sex. Because women, there's this enzyme that gets released that turns women into this. I'm like, no. Women are not, let's just call it what it is, okay, Ken? Have you ever heard of a man and a woman breaking up and the woman kill the entire family and herself? Uh, never. I haven't. I've never men, heard about that one. Men do it all the time. <laughs> Men, that there's an old saying: when a woman gets cheated on, it's it's a disaster. When a man gets cheated on, it's catastrophic. Yes, because men cannot handle it. When oh no, they can't handle it. They can't I mean, handle I mean, it for, at all. For for a number of different reasons. Um, but but yeah, they can't they can't handle men it. can't handle. It. Well, no. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of different reasons. But you should. I have never seen. This is how women are, and women out there, you'll you'll agree with this, okay? When a woman breaks up with a guy, and they talk about sex, what does she say? I don't care who he's fucking. He just ain't fucking me. Right, right, right. <laughs> what does right, the guy right. say? What does the guy say? I don't want you fucking nobody. Nobody, <laughs> nobody. If I can't have it, nobody. That's exactly what they. If I can't have it, ain't nobody getting that. <laughs> like. I like, oh, you want to kill me? I mean, damn. I mean, no, that is that is true. So, I, I'll, I'll say this, man. Um, and look, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up because we've been in it at an hour. <laughs> but I appreciate you coming on and offering insight to just just relationships. Hearing another voice um, other than my own, and uh, and and you keeping it 100. But I love a lot of what you said. Because at the end of the day, you were saying, you know what? I've got to work on me. I'm working on me. And a lot of people are unwilling. They're unwilling to work on themselves. And so you're right. Noreen said, uh, very unique insight. Thank you so much. As real as it gets. And thank you, know, you guys, for, thank you guys for listening. Together. Thank you guys for listening. I, I really want us to do more things together. I, I want to leave, I want to ask you about this, though, before you go. Yes, sir. Um, you told me behind the scenes that um, that you're getting married not in, in the near future, right? No. Uh, what? Tell me this. What makes you know that you're ready, that you are ready to do it again? Um, there's a couple of things for me. Um, I believe children and people over 75 <laughs> can have girlfriends and boyfriends. <laughs> If you're a 56-year-old grown-ass man and you've been with a woman for three, four years and you still call her your girlfriend, what are you doing? Um, I used to always say this to people. Women don't hang out with you just to kick it with you. Not at at our age. Right. No. Hell no. (laughs) Definitely not at our age. They not. No. 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 So I told my girl straight up. when I told everybody that I dated. Uh will you get married again? And I had women say, I'll never get married again. And I say, see you later. Why? I was like, because this is just honest. Okay. A lot of people don't like to be honest about the words that they say and what they mean. If you tell me that there's no way you'll ever get married again, what you're really saying is, is I'm only going to give you what I feel like giving you. I got one foot in and I got one foot out at Mm -hmm. any moment I can jet. And if you think, and I tell, I tell them all, if you think I'm a, because I don't do relationships halfway. I don't have the, I'm a hundred percent 
or I'm out. I don't have nothing in the middle. Mm. So if you think I'm going to give you 100% of my time, my effort, my everything, and you can just jet one day just because, no. The ultimate commitment is marriage. Anytime Mm. someone says to you, guys, anytime someone says to you, marriage is a piece of paper, it's just a piece of paper. Know what I say to them, Ken? I go, really? It's just a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, if it's just a piece of paper, why won't you sign it? (laughs) Evidently, it's more than just a piece of paper. (laughs) Because you are pretty dead set against signing it. (laughs) You know it's more than just a piece of paper. That's why you don't want to sign it. And I love when they say, I love when they say that like this. If it's just if it's just a piece of paper, sign it. (laughs) That's good. That that is great, man. That's good stuff. Listen, Thank Coach, I appreciate you, dude. You and I are gonna do more stuff together. I love uh, to. I I, love I'm to. glad we connected because at the end of the day, you're the type of man that I am trying to connect with. Um, and that's why when you reached out to me, because I reach out to people too, and then when, when somebody reaches out to me. I always hit them back immediately. I appreciate I, you too. I appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah, listen, you know, let's. I saw that video that you did. I was like, we got to do something together. So, I mean, um, I think there should be more collaboration amongst men, especially men of color, uh, because at the end of the day, y'all, we facing the same stuff, same shit every day. We're trying to live a life of fulfillment, make our families happy, take care of our kids. Um, all of those things and navigate this world as a black man. And so at the end of the day, we're all facing the same thing. And I don't know why it is we cannot uh, or we refuse to. We can refuse to refuse, we refuse to, right. to, um, to collaborate. It's enough to go around for everybody. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Y'all hang on. But uh, thank you, man. And look, let's do some more stuff together. All right. Let's, let's, uh, I'd like to do one with you and, and you can, you know, when you want to, to talk to women about why they, why they're not attracting the men that they want. Cause Ooh. a lot of women sit there and they, they like, well, I'll tell you this and we'll leave my sister. One time, my older sister, she tells me, she was like, I'm on a dating site and they keep sending me all these dudes. She goes, and then she just, I said, what are you looking for? She describes this dude to me. Perfect dude. I said to her, well, damn, if you meet him, I want to meet that guy. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, I'll, I'll date that guy. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, I'm like, that's you, hilarious. You got to, I always tell I always tell my clients, don't you think you need to be the person that you are, that the guy you're trying to attract? Indeed. I, I agree with that. And um, I always say, I always say, look, look, be someone that somebody that you can attract wants to fall in love with. You yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Does he want you? I know you want him, but does that guy want you? Yeah. Ooh, that's, this is going to be good. That's I do. Good. I appreciate it. Y'all hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close it out in a minute. Man, thank you so much. We'll talk you soon. All right. You got it, brother. Bye-bye. All right now. All right. Hey, listen up, y'all. That, that was amazing, dude. We didn't know what we were going to talk about. We just had a title, but he is he is an intelligent brother who is doing his thing. But he has a lot of insight that a lot of us, I, I'm going to tell you what I got out of it. I got a lot of things, but the one thing he kept saying, I'm working on me. You know what? I'm working on me. I'm working on me. And that right there, it lets me know that each one of us, have to be willing to work on ourselves. We have to be willing to say, you know what? What self-reflect on who who, who we are individually. Um, and so what I will say to you is y'all, we're starting tomorrow. I'm starting my um, I'm starting my online dating masterclass. We got all of the ladies in there. Um, if anybody's interested and in, say, I want to give myself permission, we have one spot left. If anybody says, I want coach. I want to just set up a call with you tomorrow to see if it's right for me. Do that. I want you to do that. I want you to say, um, look, I'm interested because we we start class tomorrow. All right. But I got one spot. If anybody's interested in it, I want you to, if you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube. Now, for some reason, I tried to send a message on YouTube. I don't know. 
Um, but what I want you to do is, if you're on my, my uh, website on YouTube, send me a message up in the message thing saying, hey, I'd like to, to set up a time to talk tomorrow. It's got to be early in the day. Um, or if you're on Facebook, I can send you the link tonight, uh, my phone number tonight, and we'll work it all out. If you want to talk, we'll do that. All right, y'all. That's my time. It was a great show. Appreciate you rocking with us the whole night long. And uh, remember, y'all, every journey starts with, starts with one step. One step. Be willing to take yours today. All right. I'm Coach Ken, and I'm out. Peace.